Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all have learned what we have discussed so far. If you are new to this CT Brain series, I suggest you to watch the previous two videos for your better understanding. Hi, my name is Dr. Talha and in this video, we will learn about brain parenchyma and deep brain nuclei. As you all know that brain matter is divided into outer grey and inner white matter. Grey matter consists of cell bodies of the neurons, hence it is more dense, but on a CT scan it appears more bright and lies peripherally. While the white matter is made of axons of the neurons that are covered with myelin. And we all know this from the basic neuroanatomy that myelin contains lipid or fat. Because of this fat, the white matter appears darker or I must say on a CT film it appears hypodense. Now let's visualize it on a CT scan. This here, the part of the brain lying in the periphery is the grey matter and this part in the center appearing a bit dark is the white matter. Here is a simplified diagram. Now that we have discussed and understood the fact that white matter is composed of axons and lies centrally in brain parenchyma, it would be a lot easier to understand the deep brain nuclei. But before we discuss deep brain nuclei, we need to understand about the internal capsule. Information from cerebral cortex to spinal cord and vice versa travels via the axons and internal capsule is the paired white matter structure that acts as a doorway or I must say a two-way track carrying ascending and descending fibers to and from the cerebral cortex. As it is composed of white matter tracts or axons covered by myelin, it appear darker on a CT scan. This L-shaped structure here lying next to the lateral ventricles is the internal capsule. It comprises of anterior limb, genu and the posterior limb. At this deep level of the brain, around the ventricles, there are bundles of grey matter that form the deep brain nuclei. And these nuclei lie adjacent to the internal capsule. These nuclei consist of basal ganglia and the thalamus. The basal ganglia is further divided into caudate and lentiform nucleus by the anterior limb of the internal capsule. This here lying anterior to the internal capsule is caudate nucleus and this one lying laterally is lentiform nucleus. Further divided into globus pallidus medially and putamen laterally. Now to visualize the thalamus, let's scroll down at the level of the third ventricle. This here is the thalamus lying lateral to the third ventricle and posterior to the internal capsule. You can remember this as T4 thalamus lying at the level of T4 third ventricle. Basal ganglia are very important anatomical structure that are associated with many functions, but their major role is to facilitate movement. In this video, we are only discussing the anatomy, so this was all about how you can identify the deep brain nuclei on a CT scan as it is the most common site of supratentorial hemorrhage and is associated with a 50% mortality rate. And being a medical student, a junior doctor, an intern or a resident, you should also know that this is the typical location of hemorrhage in a hypertensive patient. Hopefully, this video was helpful for you. If you have any queries regarding the topic, let me know in the comment sections. In the next video, we will discuss about the meninges and posterior fossa structures. Stay tuned. <laughs>